Here we go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Trench Grenade channel. I am your host, the average Ranger Grave enjoyer that your mom said that we have at home. Thanks for watching. Guys, the purpose of today's video is I'm going to teach you how to efficiently and properly dig a hasty fighting position and or Ranger Grave for either defensive operations or planning operations. This video will hopefully save your life in Minecraft. Now, before we get too far into it, guys, you already know the deal. If you appreciate the videos and you appreciate the work I'm putting out, consider hitting the like button. Every time you hit the like button, it tells a like-minded individual, somebody else out there on YouTube, hey, you should probably come check out this dude's channel because he's putting out just basic battle drill videos that maybe you can apply to your uh, Minecraft server. Okay, one last thing, Patreon. Guys, the Patreon is where you get the opportunity to directly support the channel. As you guys know, and as most of you guys probably do as well, anywhere uh, you're probably working anywhere from a 12 to a 16 hour day, uh, especially my fellow drill sergeants out there, okay? Um, so, uh, it means a lot. To those of you that do join the Patreon, it's $5 a month, and guess what? It gets you access to a Discord server. Now, you might be thinking, why do I want to get access to a Discord server? Well, it's where we stay up late and talk about all your favorite hasty fighting positions and all, uh, all those kind of fun things, okay? And play Battlefield and all this stuff. So, if you want to be in the Discord server, consider becoming a member of the Patreon channel. Thank you in advance. Okay, guys, uh, the drink for the video is this white monster. If I sound a little bit uh, stuffed up or nasally, it's because I'm, I'm sick, okay? So, bear with me as we get through this video. Uh, leave in the comment section, leave a coffin emoji, okay? The reason you're going to leave a coffin is it's called a ranger grave for a reason. Uh, it's where you're probably going to die in your Minecraft server, but I'm going to try to prevent that from happening. So leave uh, your favorite coffin emoji, okay, down in the uh, comment section. All right, hasty fighting positions. So let's take a drink of uh, whatever you got going on here. So cheers. Okay, so hasty fighting positions and or ranger graves. Uh, the definition. So let's say you're going to either set in a deliberate defense, aka trench warfare, okay? Or you're going to conduct some sort of patrol-based uh, operations where you can plan, uh, rehearse, and properly prepare for follow-on operations, okay? Well, when you get there, you're going to need to dig in because if you don't dig in, you're going to die. And what I, I, what I say, what I, why I say that is, um, as we've talked about before, when shrapnel or any sort of uh, explosive hits the ground, it explodes up and out uh, almost like an ice cream cone, okay? So if you're not properly dug in, it's going to be very easy for the enemy to target you with direct and indirect fire assets. So with that being said, assuming you're just now getting to wherever you're going to hold up, okay, wherever you're going to be staying at for a long period of time, and by a long period of time, I mean, if you're going to be there more than two or three hours, you need to start digging, okay? And a lot of the guys, a lot of the infantry dudes watching this are going to hate hearing that if you've never had to do this, because guess what? Uh, if you're going to be stationary for a long period of time, you're going to be digging, okay? Uh, so you need to have your E-tool, your entrenching tool, always accessible, because your squad leader is going to get told by the platoon sergeant to start having them dig in, and you might just want to be uh, well-rehearsed and well uh I guess, well uh, read in this area. That way, when your team leader comes back and inspects your hole and it's not, excuse me, up to standard, you uh, you survive that encounter with that team leader, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, so every time you stop for a long period of time, whether it be for defensive operations or patrol-based operations, uh, like down here, okay, uh, triangle, or it can be like combat football as well, okay, half the platoon on one side, half the platoon on the other, Anytime you stop for a long period of time, you're going to need to dig one of these, okay? Now, uh, typically things you're looking looking for, you need to be away from natural lines of drift. You also need, and what is a natural line of drift, Trench? A natural line of drift is where people naturally drift, um, I guess I just said it. It's like uh, anywhere where it's easy for humans or animals to walk, okay? So your pole needs to be away from those, so that way the enemy doesn't stumble upon your fighting position. You need to have overhead cover. Okay, obviously you need to have overhead cover because what is going on in a certain area, another Minecraft server in uh, our universe right now? Correct, okay? Drones, uh, artillery, and drone assets will kill you. So you need to have some sort of overhead cover. Okay, 
once you get there, the first thing you're going to do is one, one of you or your, either you or your battle buddy is just going to sit there and pull security. Okay. Um, now all of this is after your team leader has assigned you a left and right limit of your sector of fire. What he's doing with the sectors of fire is he's assigning a left and right limit that my right limit will coincide with my teammates left limit at a certain spot. Now, where will that be at? That will be at 35 meters in front of us. Okay. Our sectors of fire will, uh, will overlap. The reason is that's the average distance, uh, the maximum distance the average military male can throw a hand grenade, a spicy baseball. Leave a baseball emoji down in the comments. Okay, so our sectors of fire are gonna coincide at 35 meters, okay? Um, now, with that being said, one of us is gonna be digging while the other one is pulling security. Both of us are not gonna dig at the same time. Well, obviously, Trench, okay. You say obviously, but let me tell you something. I don't know how many times I've came across my troopers, okay? Uh, also, shout out to Platoon Daddy. Uh, he doesn't even know about me, okay? But these flags are freaking legit. But shout out to all my paratroopers out there. But you'll be trooping the line as a platoon sergeant or a squad leader, and you'll see both of your troopers in one hole digging at the same time. That's a no-go. One needs to be digging while the other one is pulling security, okay? But, um, so one is digging and one is pulling security. Now, how do I dig, Trench? I'm going to tell you. So you're going to use your M4A1 carbine or whatever rifle you're using, and that is going to be the average width, okay? Is the average, uh, of the buttstock fully extended, that is the, going to be the width at which you dig your hole. And all, what you're going to do is you're going to bend your E-tool, I wish I had mine here, and you're just going to hack into the ground making an outline of that, okay? So uh, one rifle wide, and typically it'll be two rifles long, but you need to fit it to your body obviously, but the book will tell you one rifle wide, two rifle lengths uh, long. That is, if you have to dig for a buddy and they're not there, just dig, dig the uh, hole based on your own body dimensions. Okay, so one rifle wide, two rifles long. It's going to be steep, uh, deeper in the bottom than it is on top because you want it to wait, be where you can still see out. Because if you dig just a hole straight down, you're not going to be able to see out of the hole. So it's going to be a gradual uh, decline, and it's going to get deeper, 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 the deeper uh, or farther back in the hole you get. So up here, you're still going to be able to see out of the hole. So this will be, uh, at the deepest area will be 18 inches deep down here where your rucks are going to go. But up here, it might only be 4 inches deep because you just still want to be able to see over the top of the hole. That way you can still pull security, okay? You're not digging a hole to China, even if you're in China. Hashtag mega base if you're digging a fighting position in China. Okay, anyway, uh, so it may only be two to four inches deep up here on top, but the maximum depth is going to be 18 inches for uh, your fighting position. Now, um, yeah, so that goes over how to actually dig. Now, what you're going to notice is uh, their legs are going to be able to inter interlock down here. The reason is you want to be able to tap your battle buddy's leg with your leg or your boot because one tap means, hey, are you awake? So one tap, hey, are you awake? Two taps means, hey, I think I see something or hey, I think I hear something. Three taps means I definitely see something or I definitely hear something. We're about to take contact. Let me take a drink of White Monster before I pass out from uh, this sickness I got. So again, one tap means, are you awake? Two tap means, I hear something or see something. Three tap means, we're about to take contact, get ready, okay? Um, black and gold. Black and gold, what that means is um, your team leader or squad leader is going to come by each and every one of the holes in the entire patrol base. And they're going to give you either a black or a gold, uh, they're going to give you a black and gold plan. What a black and gold plan is a distance, a direction, and a description. And if we get overrun, where we're going to run to. So this guy may be going to black, okay? And this guy may be going to gold. What that's going to do is increase the likelihood that at least some members of the platoon survive if we get overrun in the patrol base or on the defensive screen line. So that is black and gold. It's just saying, hey, if we get overrun, black is going to be 300 meters to... Uh, 90 degrees and it's going to be a ravine and the gold might be hey the gold is going to be 500 meters at uh, the, it's going to be the opposite direction of black so I don't know what I just said but 45 degrees uh, for you know and it's going to be a hilltop okay so that is a black and gold plan 
is so that when you get overrun, people, members of the platoon will survive. Camo. Okay, this is a big one. So what happens if you leave your fighting position to go out here to get camouflage? What do you think is going to happen? Correct. You're going to get killed, okay? So but here, so you never want to go in front of your forward line of troops to get camouflage, to camouflage your position, because guess what? You're going to get shot by a friendly that doesn't know you're out there. It happens all the time, okay? But I want you to consider something. If everyone in the patrol base is high crawling back, because you never walk in a patrol base or in a screen line, you always high crawl. You're never just going to stand up and walk. It's a good way to get shot in the face in your Minecraft server. So you're going to high crawl back to grab camo. But what's going to end up happening is right here, you're going to have a ton of camouflaged up little guys and holes. Okay. And I guess what's going to happen to the center? It's going to be uh, tan in the center because all the vegetation from the center of the patrol base is going to get pulled to the exterior. So you're going to see a nice pretty little uh, green circle or green triangle and a tan interior. What is that going to attract? That is going to attract drones, okay, or indirect fire from the enemy when they're scouting out with uh, helicopters or drones or whatever they're using to scout with. They may target you because they may see a perfect little green triangle and all just tan in the interior because you pulled all the vegetation from the interior to your fighting position. Just something to keep in mind. Um, you do want to put your tarp or poncho over the top of your uh, little ranger grab, okay? You can dip, you can bury the sides of your poncho with dirt to kind of, uh, one, it's going to keep, uh, it's going to keep rain and everything off of you and your gear. Two, it may very possibly save your life. If a grenade lands like right here, it, the up and out may save your life. It may not completely kill you. Okay. So that is how you're going to use poncho. Digging, um, digging, obviously it's going to be one person than the other and it's going to suck. Digging with an e-tool sucks, but the cool thing about the e-tool is it can also be used as a weapon in Minecraft, and you can also bend your e-tool at a 90 degree angle and use it as a hacking device to hack into the earth to break those roots and all and the branches and all the things that are going to be really hard to uh, actually dig through. But digging sucks, guys. If you've never done it, uh, you need to take off all your snivel gear before you begin digging because you will pass out from being a heat casualty because how much digging sucks. Um... E-tool, we already talked about it, okay? Your E-tool needs to be on your rucksack or your assault pack. It needs to be tied down. That way you don't lose it, okay? Um, eating, okay. So once, uh, I don't know if I covered it already, down here is where your rucksacks are going to go, okay, at your feet. And right here is a little runoff. This runoff is going to be the deepest point in the hole, okay? What this runoff is going to be used for is going to be if someone throws a grenade in here, the idea is that it will go to the it will go with gravity and roll to the lowest point. So down here is where we want that grenade to roll to, so it will potentially save your life if it rolls into this runoff. Now, you'd be surprised, it does happen, okay? Uh, even in training, you'll, you'll find that these runoffs do sometimes work, okay? So just trust me when I say uh, dig your runoff, not only for water, but for hand grenades to roll typically to the lowest point, the easiest place for it to get, get to, okay? Um, eating. Guys, you're never going to eat in your hole. You're going to say it's this guy's turn to eat. This guy will pull security while this trooper high crawls back here somewhere and eats, okay? They're always going to eat in the high, uh, uh, the high crawl position, okay, or in the prone firing position. You're only going to pull one thing out of your MRE at a time, slam it, and you're not going to heat things up. You're not going to use your MRE heater. So before you go on mission, it would behoove you to field strip your MRE. That way you're not carrying unnecessary extra plastic into the field because you will not be able to actually heat up your MRE in a tactical environment. Okay. Um, sleeping. Only one of you is going to get their sleep system out, their sleeping bag. You're going to use the same sleep system. And all of your gear in your rucksack needs to remain packed up. You're not going to pull everything out and have stuff laying around everywhere. You pull one item out, you use it, you put it away. You, nothing should ever be uh, laying around like crazy because if you get overrun and you have to initiate your black and gold plan, everything still needs to be packed up so you can get out of there. Um, sleeping. You will sleep in your hole, but both people will not be asleep at the same time. It'll be one to two hour shifts. This little guy will sleep. He'll wake up, throw the sleeping bag over to him, and he'll sleep, okay? So keep that in mind uh, when you're pa packing 
and everything else. If you fall asleep on guard, that's a good way to end up either smoked or dead, okay? So don't fall asleep on guard. Do what you have to do to stay awake, okay? Do what you have to do. Um, javelins. Okay, last thing. Guys, do not fire a javelin or an AT4 from your, firing, uh, from your hasty fighting position. The reason is the back blast, okay, the stuff that comes out of the back of the rocket or the javelin, um, all that back blast will kill you, okay? You have to dig a javelin specific fighting position if you want to be able to fire your javelin or your AT4 or your Carl Gustav from your hasty fighting position, you have to dig a javelin fighting position. You cannot fire any anti-tank uh, uh, rocket from or anti-tank weapon from this position. It will kill you and your buddy, okay? Uh, ask, ask me how I know. Okay, so guys, uh, in summary, this is how you... Uh, this is how you dig a hasty fighting position, okay, also known as a ranger grave. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and a comment down below. It helps out more than you know. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next. And, guys, last but not least, the Patreon. Uh, consider, consider becoming a member of the Patreon, guys. It, it's going to greatly... Uh, it'll greatly help out the channel. It's going to help uh, help the channel continue to grow, and it's going to keep me motivated to continue putting out content during the week like I am right now. Thanks for being here, guys, and until next time, this is going to be Trench Grenade, your average Ranger Grave Enjoyer, signing out. Cheers.